Back in January, the Pokemon Company and Game Freak announced a DLC expansion for Pokemon Sword and Shield. This expansion included two parts, the Isle of Armor, which we got last month, and the Crown Tundra, which is expected to be released in the fall or early winter of this year. The Crown Tundra is going to be this big, heavy lore expansion for Pokemon Sword and Shield. We're going to see the arrival of Galarian legendary forms for the legendary birds. We're going to see a new legendary Pokemon introduced named Calyrex. And we're getting a snowy environment with brand new Regis and the ability, hopefully, to catch some of the old Regis. Alongside all of this, the the old existing mythical Pokemon and legendary Pokemon are going to be available underground in explorable raid dens. All of this is shaping up to be my personal most uh, exp- most hyped for version of the DLC we're getting this year. And in this video, I wanted to discuss what some of my expectations are for this DLC, what I think they should do, what I think they should avoid, and what I really hope they include. With that being said, let's jump straight into the video. In the Isle of Armor expansion pass that we got last month, they really focused on a story for Kubfu. We got a lot of discussion with Mustard and his dojo, as well as the two towers that you could train your Kubfu in. One of the things that I felt was a little lacking is that we really only got a couple new Pokemon. We got Kubfu and his two evolutions. We got uh, the new Galarian form of Slowbro, and in the uh, Crown Tundra, it's expected that we're going to get a Galarian form of Slow King. But a lot of people were hoping that they were holding back on us, that Game Freak with Isle of Armor was going to give us a bunch of new regional variants, and unfortunately, we didn't get that. So that's the first thing that I would love to see. Regional variants when they were added in Alola, were one of the best parts of Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. They added a fresh take to a lot of new Pokemon and actually made some old Pokemon brand new favorites of mine, one of which was the uh, the Dugtrio line, even though it was just the hair, it was an excellent addition and it was a really fun change. And the lore they added to a lot of these Pokemon was also really cool. Whether it was Alolan Exeggutor basking in the heat more and being able to grow its neck and it being the original one, or Vulpix adapting to a colder climate and becoming an ice type. A lot of these things were really cool and while we did get regional forms in the base game, I think it would be really cool if these islands, if these different places off the coast of Galar also got some new forms besides just the Slowpoke line. And I'm hopeful. With the addition of some new legendary Pokemon, some new forms for those birds, and uh, new Regis entirely, it seems like this is where they're going to add a lot of that content. But I'm hoping they go above and beyond with this and give us some new forms of some already existing Pokemon. In Alola, we got a lot of Gen 1, and in Galar, we did get some Gen 2s, but we also got some more Gen 1s, whether it was Weezing or other Pokemon. We got some Gen 5s like Stunfisk, which was surprising. I would like to see them branch out. Maybe we get some Johto variants. Maybe we get some uh, some Kalos variants. We barely see Kalos talked about, and X and Y are some of the best games. I think this addition would do a lot for the Crown Tundra and would also give us a bit more of a flavoring to this part of the region that is so separate from mainland Galar. The second thing that I would love to see them explore is really give us some deep information as to why the legendary birds have different forms. Also, I want them to establish once and for all whether or not there's multiple versions of these Pokemon. In the anime, we see that there's a baby Lugia in one of the episodes of the Johto arc, and we know that the Johto movie, uh, Pokemon uh, Movie 2000, is canon to the anime. A lot of people have discussed this in depth, and we know that the storyline does match up. And that basically implies that there are multiple Lugia in the world, and in the newest one, Pokemon Journeys, we also see that there's a Lugia. So... Do the games also say that there are multiple versions of these legendaries and these mythicals? That's one thing that I think the lore of the Crown Tundra could go a long way in addressing. Why do we have these Galarian um, legendary birds? Why do we have new forms for Zapdos, Moltres, and Articuno? Going along with this, two new Regis? How does it fit into Regigigas? Regigigas was basically the the king golem of the three, Regice, Registeel, and Regirock, and its lore was pretty well established in Hoenn and in Sinnoh. 
adding two new legendary Regis complicates the lore, at least in my opinion, a little bit, and I'm going to be interested to see how they address it. There have been times in the past where, of course, Game Freak really hasn't given us straight answers or deep, thought-out explanations for why certain legendary Pokemon appear in different areas and kind of how they all work in a hierarchy, and I would love to see them address this in this game. Expansion of a game. This is not a new game. The next thing that I would love to see, and this is a little bit different from the rest of my list, but I would love to see them release a definitive edition of Sword and Shield. Now, I know most people are going to groan and say, why are they going to charge us $60 for the same game again? Just for consistency's sake, and a lot of games do this, I would like to see them bundle all the DLC together and release definitive editions of Sword and Shield. As a collector, it's something that I would really like to see. A lot of time with DLC, the concern is that in years moving forward, a long time down the down the timeline of, of history when we can no longer get this DLC from the eShop, when the Nintendo Switch is no longer the supported console, there will be really no way to get a hold of this DLC anymore. For the preservationist in me's sake, I would love if they released a version that had all of this. And I know that's a very random and it's, it's a bit of an arbitrary ask, but it's something that I hope Game Freak does before we get the inevitable Diamond and Pearl remakes next year. The next thing that I would like to see the Crown Tundra add is something straight out of black and white, and that is seasonal changes. Now, I know this is a weird one, and this list is going to have a couple weird things because I see this Sword and Shield DLC as the time when Game Freak is experimenting with what they want the future of Pokemon to be as a whole. I think the future of Pokemon are these massive open world places, not just the routes that we saw in Sword and Shield in the base game, but completely open areas. The The whole map of Isle of Armor is completely connected and completely traversable with almost no uh, loading screens. I think this is what Game Freak is looking to do in the future, and one of the things that I think they should bring back is dynamic weather. They had dynamic weather in the wild area in the base game of Sword and Shield, but it was weird. It was constantly changing. You would get different weather in different spots, even though it was all the same landmass. It was a little too unreal, at least for my tastes. I thought Black and White and Black and White 2 did weather and seasons, more importantly, the best. Days, you have certain weathers, monthly seasonal changes. It brings new looks to different areas. Sometimes it brought new music to different areas, and it just made Black and White and the fifth generation of Pokemon feel so much more alive than any Pokemon games before it. I think weather and seasons hopefully will make a comeback in future Pokemon games, and I would really like it if Game Freak could begin that process here with the Crown Tundra. I know it's a snowy route, but maybe we could have increases and decreases in the amount of snow we see on the ground, snow melt, areas opening up when the weather gets a little bit warmer or a little bit cooler, and maybe we could see different forms of snowy weather, whether it's uh, light snowfall, blizzards, all of these different things I think would go a long way to making the players feel more immersed into this new expanded part of Sword and Shield. The last thing that I would really like them to add in the Crown Tundra is something that I was very disappointed we didn't have in Isle of Armor, and that is trainer battles throughout the new expanded areas. In the Isle of Armor, you could encounter a lot of Pokemon, and there were people to talk to to get items from, but there were no new trainer battles to raise your team. I would love if they added more trainers around the world, more people to battle, raise up your team with, and hopefully get them up to just a little bit higher level than when you started. I think adding trainer battles would also make the game just feel more alive, add more characters into the world, just make it seem like it's much more of a lively, vibrant place. If we added trainer battles, I hope they would also add level scaling. There was a report by IGN right before Isle of Armor released that Isle of Armor was going to have level scaling, meaning if you entered with a team, <coughs> excuse me, if you entered with a team of level 20 Pokemon, the rest of the Pokemon in the area would also be level 20 and they would grow with you. So if you got your team up to level 50, the trainers would have level 50, the wild would be level 50. Hopefully we see at least trainers implemented and maybe they fix level scaling because I just... I feel like level scaling is the logical next step for Pokemon, and hopefully in the second part of the DLC we can see it. Now I know it's a little unrealistic to want all of these changes, but as much as this is a list of things I'd like to see in Crown Tundra, it's also a list of things I'd like to see Pokemon do moving forward. So 
My fingers are crossed. So far, Isle of Armor surpassed my expectations for the first half of DLC, and I'm hoping that the Crown Tundra will also surpass my expectations. And next year, when we hopefully get those Diamond and Pearl remakes on the Nintendo Switch with the Sinnoh region in Glorious 3D, we'll have a lot of really good changes to the Pokemon formula that'll make those games as good as they can possibly be. That is pretty much going to do it for today's video. I apologize for the lack of content recently. I've been trying to figure out what I want to do with this channel for a while now, and it's, it's going to be an interesting transition. We're going to see what happens, and um, hopefully you guys are all on board for the ride of what's to come. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my list. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think they should add in the Crown Tundra DLC. And also, what did you think of the Isle of, of Armor Isle of Armor in general? I did a review of it on my channel a couple weeks back, so if you didn't see that, I would highly recommend you go check out that video as well because I gave my full thoughts on the first half of the DLC there. And when Crown Tundra comes out in a few months now, my fingers are crossed for September, but it'll probably be the beginning of November, in all honesty. I'll do a review for that as well. I've been Linky, hope you all enjoyed today's video, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace out.